So how does one shed their inner baggage? Yeah, I mean, that's the million dollar question, right? But I think it starts with first admitting that you have some inner baggage and that self-awareness. And for me, a great practice to take you there is something that is very foreign to a lot of people. I call it my sit and stare time, my sit and stare practice. And you do exactly what it says. You sit and you stare out the window, you stare straight ahead, but you do this by yourself with all the distractions off. You can do it with other people, but no talking, no looking like, ooh, are you into this? Or ooh, what do you think? you really have to just to zone in and, and, and tune out. And, and when you do this, this great thing happens where you start listening to your inner voice. I call it God, spirit, wisdom, universe, divine intelligence. It doesn't matter what you call it, but you start hearing those inspirational messages, which I think are the truth rather than your ego mind that says, why are you even doing this? This doesn't work. Why'd you say that dumb thing in the meeting? You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not keeping up with Sally on Instagram, not doing this enough. That's the ego. We're we're tuning all of that out because we're always bombarded by that. But this is really getting quiet with yourself. There's a beautiful quote by philosopher Blaise Pascal that says, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Wow. Um, And think of how infrequently people of all ages, of all creeds, of all races, sit quietly in a room by themselves for longer than two seconds. Never. So I invite everyone to start with this practice, because when you get more in tune with the truth, with your inner wisdom, if you believe in God and a higher power, getting really connected to that source in a meaningful way, great place to do that is in nature, as as I'm sure you know, but really just shutting everything down, tuning in. Um, It sounds scary. I, I will say though, I, I do this in my, my keynotes and I invite audiences to do this just for one minute. And at, for the first time I did it, I thought, oh, people are not going to be into this. They're going to think it's too woo. I mean, like, what is this lady talking about? It blows my mind every time that audiences, whether it's 30 people or 300 people or 3000 people, the room is silent and you hear a pin drop. And what that says to me is how desperate we all are for some downtime for our brains and our hearts to just relax and listen and just be.